This video is to highlight the enhancements within the Visi 2016 R1 release. We'll start with changes to the main user interface. A tabbed toolbar has been added to better manage the function icons in the viewing area. This makes it possible to display functions only related to the geometry that you're working on. Any of the tabs can be modified by adding and removing additional icon bars. By right clicking next to the last tab, it is possible to add additional tabs. It's possible then to right click on the tab, adjust the name. And then the default operation to simply right click under the tool tabs and you can add in any of the available icon strips. To simply remove a tab, you right click, remove tab. If the new tool tabs are not to your liking, it is possible to turn them off. Come to system, system options, user interfaces, and tick off show tabbed toolbars. This puts us back to the same interface as the Z21. A quick access toolbar has now been added to the very top of the Visi interface with functions like new file, open, save, so common functions. You can add and remove uh, these functions by simply clicking on the arrow at the end of the strip. So if I remove the undo history and tick it back on again, you can see you can add and remove icons. If you don't like to clutter up your interface with icons and drop down menus, it is now possible from the same area to be able to turn these functions off. Of course, if you do this, you must use the hotkey operation selection or right mouse menu or the pre-select to activate your commands. As an example, if I use the uh, hotkey combination to create a cube, I'll start creating a cube and also at the top of the screen you'll notice some, some uh, icons here to be able to undo and also redo within a command. So page forwards and back, you can also accept uh, the operation or cancel out of an operation. If I now select some geometry from the model and right mouse click, I get presented with the pre-select menu, which only gives me functions that are relevant to the geometry that I've selected. Another addition now, if I create some more geometry and right mouse click, you can see a pop-up menu comes where I can change pick points, uh, anchor points for selection. These menus were, are still created on the left-hand side menu, uh, but we don't need to keep coming over to that side of the screen to, to make these ch uh, function changes. I'm now going to highlight some other changes that have been made within the geometry selection environment. First of all, if I start with the enhanced pick, you see when I hover over an anchor point, the geometry selection has not changed. The changes have been made within the enhanced pick environment. Now when I come and move the cursor over an end of a line or a midpoint of a line, you can see a dialog pops up and allows me to type in an offset from a reference point. In addition to this, if I create another line, if I press the space bar with the cursor over reference positions, you can see theoretical uh, point selection geometry is automatically uh, presented on the screen. And I can also start a line along a reference line by simply typing in a value and pressing enter. See, as I move the cursor around, these theoretical projections are created to allow me to simply create geometry without having to construct reference geometry. Now, if I come into the settings, I can also activate this functionality to automatically be selected by simply hovering the cursor over the end of a, or midpoint of a line. 
So I'm not pressing the space bar, and you can see as I hover over the curse or the end of lines, these theoretical reference geometry is, is projected. Other additions that have been made to the enhanced pick is the ability to be able to select edges and on surfaces. As you can see, the anchor point on the end of the cursor either goes yellow for selecting edges or blue for selecting surfaces. To add more control to this environment, it's able you are able to in, uh, use enhanced picking filters. So if I activate the filter interface, you can see there's additional options selected. So using this environment, I can either turn off edges, if I turn off circle selection and face selection, shut the interface. Now when I move the cursor over pieces of geometry, you can see it no longer selects the center of a circle. But I can select the actual circle itself and now I can select edges of a solid but not faces. Just gives us a little more control to be able to select just the geometry that we need. If I now use the polyline selection method to select some geometry, but if I keep my finger down on the left hand mouse button I get the option to be able to brush select geometry so I can just scribble anywhere on the screen and anywhere the line crosses, the geometry is selected. If I let go, I'm still within the polyline selection and I can simply make mouse clicks and anywhere the line crosses, the geometry is selected. You're going to see some graphical changes also made uh, within the system. If I activate the hidden line in different style, you'll see that hidden line is shown and you're able to select these hidden lines and actually do modeling functions by selecting through the model. Um, and if I come into the settings, you have a lot more control over how this geometry is, is presented. There's a, an area here where you can actually have it the same color as the model geometry, or you can specify a color. You can also specify a line style, so you've got control over how the lines are shown, and also the transparency of those lines. So you can make all these adjustments on the fly and even force your own colors on them. Anti-alias management has also been added to the graphics setting area. This allows a graphics adjustment to be made to avoid segmentation of graphics within the viewing area. Some additional options have been added to the user interface options for controlling the management of mouse buttons. So you can control from a drop down menu what function your left and right mouse button functions have. Another change you're going to notice when you come to select the surface analyzer, you'll see the dialog is now docked like the layer or the cam dialogues, it's now docked on the right hand side of the screen. If you're using the save part as function, you're going to see a new icon on the left hand side in here. So you can see if, there's a, if you have any geometry with a dimension between two pieces of geometry, when you come to select a part to save as, it's going to select any linked geometry. And with the option turned off, you can see when I put the cursor over the model geometry, it doesn't select the second model. I'm now going to highlight some changes that have been made within the quick key area. For a long time now, F2 has provided the ability to rotate the model to preset view directions. And by using control and F2 key combination together, you've been able to orientate the model to any orthogonal view. This control can now be assigned to any key combination. So if I assign this to the Z key, select OK, this is within the quick key area, so you need to restart Visi. If I orientate the model close to the view I want, press Z. Again, if I want to look at it in this orientation, Z, it just squares it up square to the axis. 
but one key can activate this function. Any old users of the system are going to notice in this release that the X, Y and Z keys do not activate a section through a 3D model. But panic not, you can still activate this function by using the dynamic section dialog or you can assign using the quick key uh, environment, you can assign these functions onto any keystroke. So if I come into the quick key environment, again I will activate the X, Y and Z section to the X, Y and Z keys. Then you'll need to restart the system. But if I press the Z and X key, you can see it activates the, the section. And if I use the number plus or number minus key, it moves the section through the path.